Hey guys, and welcome to the cafe for dig number nine. So what I want to do today is just a little bit of collage work. I've got my coffee here. Hope you have something good to drink. Now I've got just a little piece of corrugated paper here that I want to add. And here's just some, this was from some packaging and I just threw some black paint on this. And then of course this is a piece of uh, newsprint from my collage paper making video. And then I just grabbed, I've got something fun to share with you here. These little composition books are really fun to mess with the paper. The pages are very big. And here's a bunch of these. Now all I did is I had some leftover dye from a project a couple summers ago. And I just took my kitty litter tub and stacked and sprayed dye, leftover dye, and um, left these for a couple weeks to just soak up and dry. And um, I, I do have these scanned, so I will make sure and let you know when I have some in my shop. But um, they're really fun, and look at how big they are. So you can do a lot with these. Now these ones I'm not thrilled with, but they can be painted right over, so it's not a problem at all. So these pages are really fun to create, and then you have a nice stack around. So I just grabbed a few paints. I've got Golden Titan Buff, Raw Umber, Burnt Sienna, and you know how it is. I may use them, I may not. I just like to have them handy. I've got a couple lids here of different sizes because I want to make some circles on this project. And then I've got Distress Oxides Black Soot and Hickory Smoke. My squirt bottle full of water and some black and white acrylic paint. I've got a couple sponges here and I've got my Mod Podge glue sitting close by. And then here's the page that I want to tear up and use some of this page here. And it is just, it's hard with these because I love both sides, but you've got to pick one side or the other. And I'm really liking this area here. So let's go ahead and just tear a chunk off of this. Now this is drywall mud tape here, and I've just got a little chunk of this for some extra added texture, and I'm gonna cut it up a little bit more and just use a little bit of it here and there. So I've gone ahead here and just uh, taped down a piece of Canson mixed media paper and I have gessoed this. So um, it's got some nice brush texture and it's really tough to see I'm sure, but it's a nice little piece of paper. So I just went ahead and grabbed my little jelly plate and brayer and my little old gift card too. And also I wanted to add some of this stormy blue color and it may not work out for this page and it's fine if it doesn't, I'll just cover it over. So let's go ahead and get some color on here now.
that this is mostly dry, I want to add some more blue and just kind of fill in some areas here and there. I really like this combination of blue with the burnt sienna. So, you know, today I want to talk a bit about color and what colors do you love? And even if you don't think certain colors will go well together, um, I invite you to just try them. Get them out, get them together, and get them on a page or a canvas, and just see if they work out. And you know, there's so much to be said for layers. I always work in a lot of layers, and it really provides a lot of depth for your pieces. And I said in another recent project, I think I said it in the um, eco dyeing, uh, four ways to grunge up your eco dyes. In that video, I talked about how every painting has its ugly phase. Let's go ahead and put a little bit more blue here. And what I'm doing is kind of color blocking. Now, here's what will happen if you have a little bit of uh, wetness going on on your page. It's kind of acting like a resist. So I have to stay away from that and let it dry out a little bit more. So um, every painting has an ugly phase. And so many of us, I see this happen all the time, where people they start working on something and it's not coming out the way they want it to and they don't like it at all and they give up. And the problem with that is every painting goes through this. At least all the paintings I do go through this. So you want to give your painting an opportunity to come out of that phase. And you know, I would say 999 paintings out of a thousand will come out of it. Now, there are times where I have so much frustration with art not coming out the way I want it to that I have gotten mad <laughs> and thrown stuff in the trash. And um, just as recently as last week that happened, I had an entire week where I was trying to film videos for you guys and nothing was going right. And I ended up throwing out three pieces of artwork because I just couldn't get anything to work. So now I'm just gonna rinse off my brush. And over here, I've got I've got my little water bottle or um, cup glass container here and uh, my rags. So my brushes, it doesn't have to be perfectly clean, but I do want this burnt sienna color to show through. So you definitely want to have some water handy. But like I was saying, you know, I just didn't have the patience to give those pieces of artwork time to evolve. And I was just having a really rough time. And that's okay too, you know, sometimes we just have to cut ourselves some slack and start anew, you know? So there's a lot of water in here and it's making the paint do interesting things, which is fine. I like that a lot. Now, quite a bit of this is gonna get covered with collage, but I want to build up these layers. Now we're gonna add a real drastic change to this page by adding some white. So let's go ahead and and see what happens with that.
this is pretty dry and I already really like how it's coming out. It's very bold and graphic and that's a fun thing to do. Color blocking like this can be really relaxing and a fun way to paint. So now I've got this piece of corrugated paper and I'm just going to put some of this burnt umber paint on here and get rid of all of that. I just want the whole thing completely painted over and I may even add a little bit of the burnt sienna but I'm really liking just how it looks with the burnt umber on here. It's fun to add just little bits of texture here and there and I really love corrugated cardboard and paper because you can um, do a base coat on it and then highlight it really beautifully. So let me just finish this last little bit up here and I'll show you what I mean. It's nice to, it's a nice, this texture here gives a great opportunity to um, add contrast to your pieces. So now that I've got this, I'm kind of thinking I want it right there, but it's really kind of dead center on the piece right there, and I'm not sure I like that too, too much. I kind of like that, how it cuts into that white part, plus it puts it over here on the third. I think I'll play with that a little bit. I don't ever worry. I mean, I want things to be pretty dry, and I really don't worry too much about stuff being totally dry unless I'm going to use pens, because then it's really, you can ruin your pens quickly, but other than that, it's perfectly fine with me. Okay, so I'm just going to throw that right there. I'm going to do a, just the tiniest bit of tight and buff. And this is dry enough. I, I, I put it on really thin. So it's nice and dry here. Now uh, I'm going to grab a smaller brush. Just this flat will work fine. It's actually an angled flat. And I want to load both sides of my paintbrush really well with paint. But I want to go over this just very lightly. I don't want it to go down into the crevices. I just want to hit those top parts and actually the best way to do this and uh, you really want to make sure you don't have any blobs or clumps on your brush is to come across it it's actually working both ways pretty well that's given a really nice little element of texture and not everywhere. You don't want, you know, what I say about the matchy matchy. You don't want the matcha matcha. I don't want that there. So I always have a spit in my artwork too. <laughs> I'm just going to add this tight and buff here and then I'm going to go ahead and clump it here and there add some interest to the page. So look at how much that came out. Just that tiny bit of paint gave such a bold and graphic look. And so you just, you know, it's, it's easy to get attached to certain areas and you can keep them of course, but sometimes you have to cover them over. It's just the way it goes. Okay, so I'm pushing that into this corrugated paper. And I'll show you why in just a second. This is such a fun, relaxing way to do artwork. I really enjoy doing artwork like this. Just, you know, letting myself have a few materials and color and just see where it takes me. And like we were talking about earlier, give yourself the opportunity to test out different colors, okay? Because 
so many of the rules say, oh, this doesn't go with that, and that doesn't go with this, and you end up trying those combos just out of experimentation, and they end up being amazing. So you've got to give yourself an opportunity just to try. So now what I want to do is take just a little bit more tight and buff here and pretty dry I want to work I gently want to go over this because I shoved that paper down in there and it gave me the texture on top of the paper and you know I even think uh, black would look even better but it showed up a little and it's going to show up even better with the black so let's just go over it a tiny bit here okay and if you want your colors true just take the time to rinse your brush it's fine I don't want to go over this part here I want that to stay but look at how fun that is so now I'm gonna since I have this black on my palette, on my little jelly plate here, I'm just going to add some to this piece here and there. And this corner is already so dark anyway, it probably won't make a difference. And let's try adding a, a bit here. So you can knock stuff back again and again. You can knock it back and bring it forward. loving just how the drywall tape is looking um, all by itself without any paint or anything and I'm surprised I didn't realize I would love it that much and I like this cluster of collage here and this one's really coming looking pretty nice to me but I want to add just a smidge of this black here and then I would like to add a little chunk of some of this over top I like this. I think this goes with this piece well. I like this little chunk of it here. want to add some circles so I don't want to overdo it I want to take it kind of easy but I'd like to do some a couple of dark blue ones so let's just get a little bit of drop of this paint and it doesn't really need much at all
let yourself play with colors and just know that if you don't like a certain color it's perfectly fine you can cover it right over not a problem So this kind of artwork is so fun because you get to explore color, you get to explore color combinations, and you get to, nothing's written in stone. You can absolutely change it if you don't like it. So this today, the message today is don't fear color. And it's very easy to fear color. I have been through years and years of being afraid of color. And, you know, the thing is, is you can always cover it. So you've got to give yourself an opportunity to explore and play around and see what you like and what you don't. And let's go ahead. I want to do one last finishing touch. I'm going to take the white and spread it out here. Oh, oh, contamination. <laughs> it's okay. I'm just going to let it be that little blob right there. I'll smooth it with my finger. And then I want to take my little lid and I have the bigger lid. So let's, let's go off the edge. I just want to do a partial with this. Let's go off the edge up here right there. Yeah, I love that. Okay, so um, I wanted to do small. So let's do a couple little small ones. And it's so fun to do this where you have the contrast. But I don't want to take away from that mark. I really like that mark, where it, what's happening with that by itself. So let's go ahead and go, oh, it's hard to decide. It's so hard. Let's do one here. I like that. And then let's do a bit down here. Let's do, Let's just leave it like that. All right, guys. So here's this piece all complete now. And I really think it came out cool. It very much reminds me of a cityscape. And that was not at all my plan when I started. And that is what is so much fun about abstract art. You just take off in a direction and end up having all of these little happy things happen. So um, I wanted to apologize real quick. I've been having a little bit of uh, mic problems and I did not have my mic on for most of this video. I was just talking with the camera mic and that's always so terrible. So I apologize for that. I think I've got it all figured out and good now, but I also want wanted to show you I did two more since I had these colors out I went ahead and did two more pieces with this color combination and I'm gonna go ahead and make videos out of these but I'm not gonna do any talking I'm just gonna make the videos um, sped up a little bit and then music I like how this little one came out. This is a four by nine inch, just little piece of paper here.
And then last but not least, here's this page here. And what I really like about these dark colors is you can get a lot of grunge really quickly and easily. And they always remind me of a uh, city at nighttime. And then the contrast of the white always really serves to make your artwork really pop. So I hope you enjoyed this and look forward to these two. They're going to be real quick and easy videos and I'll see you real soon. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.